హవ్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ పాపిరెడ్డి గారు టి పాపిరెడ్డి గారు ఆంధ్రబుల్ చైర్మన్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ కౌన్సిల్ ఫర్ హైయర్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ హైదరాబాద్ అండర్ ప్రొఫెసర్ పాపిరెడ్డిస్ లీడర్షిప్ జస్ట్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్ ఈజ్ కమిటెడ్ ఫర్ ప్రమోషన్ ఆఫ్ అటానమీ దే హార్ ఇనిషియేటివ్స్ లైక్ ప్రమోషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇండస్ట్రీ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఇంటరాక్షన్ అండ్ ఇంటిగ్రేటెడ్ ఆన్లైన్ అడ్మిషన్స్ ఫర్ అండర్ గ్రాడ్యుయేట్ స్టూడెంట్స్ యాజ్ వెల్ దీస్ ఆర్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఫ్యూ ఇనిషియేటివ్స్ డాక్టర్ మహమూద్ అస్లం ఫరవేజ్ ద వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ ఆఫ్ మను ప్రొఫెసర్ గోపాల్ రెడ్డి ద మెంబర్ యూఈసీ ప్రొఫెసర్ రామచంద్రన్ గారు ద వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ ఓయు ప్రొఫెసర్ వెంకటరమణ మై ఫెలో వైస్ చైర్మన్ టిఎస్ఈహెచ్ఈ ప్రొఫెసర్ కె భాస్కర్ గారు ద వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ ఎంఎస్ యూనివర్సిటీ తిరునెల్వేలి ప్రొఫెసర్ ఎన్ రాజేంద్రం వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ అలగప్ప యూనివర్సిటీ కరేకుడి మధుకర్ ద ఫార్మర్ అడ్వైజర్ టు నాక్ బెంగళూరు కవిత ధైర్యాని గారు ద వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ జేఎన్ఎఫ్ఏ అండ్ ద పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ద వేరియస్ సదరన్ స్టేట్స్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ వన్స్ అగేన్ ద అటానమీ దెర్ ఈజ్ నో సెకండ్ ఒపీనియన్ ఆన్ దట్ ఇష్యూ వీ నీడ్ అటానమీ ఆర్ ఫర్ గ్రేటర్ అటానమీ now whatever the syllabus or courses the universities are offering in a state jacket that is very rigid system and we have to go a long way to change all these courses or syllabus that is why we have to encourage the autonomy for the colleges to go to divide the courses whatever they want to benefit the students as well as the economy these are the two important issues since higher education is related to the job market and which courses are more suitable for the emerging economy and the needs of the economy how to transform our curriculum or our syllabus uh, towards the needs of the growing economy this is a very important issue that is why we need a greater autonomy not autonomy a greater autonomy for the all the colleges and for this issue the university should also think we should not think in a negative way we should have no preconceived notions if the greater autonomy is for certain college they may misuse that position but we should not think or we should not start that premise we should allow the colleges to frame their syllabuses run their system conduct their exams give their results in a a greater freedom a greater flexibility at the same time we have to also see how these colleges are running these are the two important issues and we have to treat between these two extremes one is the greater autonomy another is the how to uh, control the misuse of this greater autonomy recently the state council has faced a, a tough job regarding of the some courses uh, uh, that has been offering by the jnfa or mou with the some of the uh, college uh, that is uh, animation gaming visual effects certain things their syllabuses their the way of running their courses or conducting their courses are so liberal so flexible they cannot take that system into the either ugc or act or at the level of university also but they are successfully conducting their courses and uh, they have been creating lot of jobs in that sector how to bridge this gap how to synchronize the those colleges are performing or running very well and creating jobs and other things on one hand how to certain extent formalize those things into the our higher education system uh in the university system or the ascti or ugc this also what a top job uh, in the higher education and recently we have been uh, observing one phenomena unfortunately some of the 
Dimitri universities or five universities. They have been misusing their position. Certain extent, they have been not adhering to the any rules of the ACT or the UEC or the matter of other things also. They have been offering number of courses. I don't want to name some of the institutions. They are located in Hyderabad only. Some do me uh, one deep to university is offering a computer science in 15, 16 sections in one academy. This is a gross violation. One cannot offer the 15, 16 sections in one course or one subject. And some of the deep universities are the two off campus in Hyderabad. They are also offering distance education mode in degree courses. We have been observing a highly disturbing uh, situation in the higher education, the, particularly in the uh, realm of the distance education. Even some of the, our state universities are also acknowledging misuse of that position. On one hand, we, have, we wanted to strengthen the higher education, we have to promote the quality education and all other tall talks. On the other hand, our government regularity is somewhat different. Therefore, I request all the vice chancellors, the UEC member here also there, how to curb these malpractices. There are one or two black sheep is there, but we should not undermine the system. We have to give the liberty or flexibility to the colleges to frame their syllabus, run their college, you have to give the autonomy. But at the same time, we have to be very alert, very careful to control the illegal or the malpracticing or the, some black ship elements in the higher education. These, with few words, I thank the Southern region uh, Sinovas Garu for inviting me as a, one of the guests this uh, very important uh, event. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Patrick Garu, for sharing your concerns uh, regarding higher education. Now, I request uh, Professor uh, S. Ramachandram Garu, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Usmani University, Hyderabad, one of the oldest universities of the country. And also, this is the university having the highest number of affiliating colleges in this country. And uh, the college also, the university also has significant number of autonomous colleges with it. So his uh, views would be very critical and useful to us. Professor Gopal Reddy, member UGC. Professor Pap Reddy, chairman, State Council for Higher Education. Professor Mamad Aslam Parvez, Vice Chancellor <coughs> Manu. Professor K. Baskar, Vice Chancellor MS University. Professor N. Rajendran, Vice Chancellor Algapa University. Professor Ramana. Vice Chairman, State Council of Higher Education, Professor Kavita, Vice Chancellor JNFU, and the dignitaries sitting there, and then the delegates. Good morning to all of you. Uh, first of all, uh, I should congratulate the UGC for conducting this workshop on a very important topic. I come from a university uh, which has 720 affiliated colleges, out of which, of course, maybe around 50 of them are um, autonomous, or 50. You are telling 59. Maybe out of that, maybe around 50 maybe from Usman University. Uh, in fact, um, I always encourage the college to go for autonomous, simply because we don't want to monitor and control these colleges. <laughs> we are not trained for that. Our faculty is not trained for, you know, going for affiliations, doing monitoring, doing controlling, all that is not possible actually. You know, much of our time is wasted in this, you know, job actually. Now already today, our university has started, uh, you know, inspecting these colleges. You know, many of our professors are busy doing all the job. That's one of the reasons, of course, we don't want, you know, have this application system to stay for long. 
And I for one believe that, you know, the excellence comes only when you have the autonomy. So you can govern yourself, you can frame curriculum of yourself, right? You can manage your finances yourself. So if that freedom is there, obviously, you can excel. In fact, uh, quite often we discuss these things, where particularly when you, you know, frame the curriculum. There are many issues which we face because of the affiliation, affiliation system. Quite often, we have to resort to common minimum program, which leads to minimum standards. We, don't, we can't introduce interdisciplinary courses because of the various limitations that come from the affiliation colleges. Not all colleges are at the same level. So we can't introduce interdisciplinary courses. We can't introduce skill-based courses because some of them are not equipped so well. And, um, and we can introduce, you know, MOOCs because, you know, are, some of them are not so equipped. So these are the problems we face, and we resort to a common minimum program. So obviously, if you have a common minimum program, I, I believe that it is going to lead to minimum standards. So if you want to come out of this, I, I feel that is autonomy is the only way out. In fact, each time I meet a good college, I always ask them, you please go for autonomy as early as possible. Right. So, of course, we have to probably this kind of workshops should be helping to understand the importance of the autonomy and uh, the change that is likely to bring. Um, you know, I, I also come from an autonomous college. In fact, our university college of engineering, from where I come, is autonomous within the university. In fact, the university has given that freedom to become autonomous. I also worked before autonomy and after autonomy in the same college. Obviously, for every pie, we used to go to university for you know, sanctioning. But then afterwards, it has brought a lot of change, the way that we function. Um, I can only say that you know, the, the, uh, the, 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 you know uh, this kind of workshops should bring the awareness, sensitize the colleges to become autonomous. There are only benefits. Of course, there are, there are you know, few issues. Uh, just now, Professor Property has raised. Of course, those issues will be there. But over a period of time, I think, you know, the college will realize. Of course, this autonomous com comes with a lot of responsibility as well. And um, definitely, the college, you know, definitely they will realize the you know, the importance of the autonomous status. And the UCC also is coming forward to help the autonomous colleges in, in funding, actually. And they should take this, uh, uh, you know, as an opportunity. And uh, I, I uh, definitely hope that many more colleges will become autonomous. From our side, uh, you know, as I told you, we always encourage these colleges to become autonomous. And I would like to see a day where no single college is you know, affiliated to university. Thank you very much. Now I request uh, Professor V. Venkat Ramanagaru, Honorable Vice Chairman, Telangana State Council for Higher Education. Professor Venkat Ramanagaru is a Professor of Management and very energetic and active committed professor. We have a lot of personal association with him and academically. I request him to kindly speak to us. Distinguished members on the dais, I'm not taking names because it'll take a lot of time. And most valued audience, who but without whom, the process of un autonomous colleges will not take shape, or probably we cannot realize the dream. When Dr. Srinivas told me about this workshop, <clears throat> I was very keen to attend it. But due to one other workshop in the city, we are not able to attend the whole day. But first, I must thank uh, Professor Gopal Nadigar, a very eminent educationist a former very senior colleague of mine at Usman University. When I joined teaching, he was already a very senior colleague. And over the years, I have seen his love for autonomy, love for encouraging autonomous colleges, love for quality. And at the University of Hyderabad, when I was there before this assignment, 
he had come many times to encourage us to take up many activities. One of them was the incubation, innovation, entrepreneurship. He in fact came for one of our programs to, uh, to distribute certificates for the incubators, so to speak. Now why I'm saying this is, today higher education requires a complete new and a different outlook. We have been doing the similar kind of educational systems we have been following, but what requires for an autonomous college, what are the essentials or steps to be taken, I wanted to just speak for two to three minutes. All of our earlier speakers, very distinguished speakers and vice chancellors spoke about the need, the relevance, the role, and all this thing. But I am talking about the approach towards autonomous college. What do we do? Suppose if I am an autonomous college, what do I do? As a dean of the Central University of School of Management, I faced the NAC committee once. I'm just narrating another incident. And the first thing we said is, all the faculty sat down and said, what is that we want to speak? What is vital, what is essential, what is desirable? So we made our activities vital, essential, desirable. What are our achievements, what are our curriculum, etc. As an autonomous college, the expectations from you would be, start new courses, restructure the curriculum, inculcate research culture, strive for quality in everything. Quality of delivery of classes, quality of governance, quality of student relationships, quality of faculty, um, what do you call, um, feedback. Promote healthy practices. This is missing, I think, with all due respects to all the academicians. None of our universities, none of our colleges, most of them, do not involve students in community research, extension services, projects. Once we took a ex we, we small experiment, sir, I took my MBA students to a village. We spent half day. At the end of that half day, 40 kilometers away from Hyderabad, the students completely, they were in tears. Because just 40 kilometers from this Cyberabad, which is supposed to be the most advanced city, there is rural poverty, there is fluorosis, there is no toilets in government schools. So I think the students really got exposed to the real life situation. And then, some of the things we did, and I want to share this because we met with a lot of success earlier, and as our Honorable Chairman said, we are going to further strengthen such activities. One of the first things autonomous colleges can look at is strengthening the school boards. I know some colleges within Hyderabad who have got school boards with CEOs on their board who can guide them to about the employability. One of the things you could also do is incubation center. You could inculcate a project component in your curriculum, and you can ask students to present their case studies academic planning, and you can always do, you should always encourage a sharing of faculty achievements. Every time we go to a seminar, you should ask them to come back and present it and document it. Most important thing when you apply for autonomy is documentation of entire thing and external activities. Finally, what exactly are the compliance issues? I'm not from UGC, but I have seen many colleges who have done very well in this. First of all, an academic plan. What, where are we? Where are we going to two years later, five years, 10 years? A faculty recruitment, which is fair, transparent, and invites, provides equal opportunity. Student admission policy, a research plan, what are the research areas, thrust areas, who is going to do, etc. A networking plan that helps the teaching and research collaborations in your area. One of our council members recently suggested that we have a lot of cement units in Nalgonda. But no college in Nalgonda has been trying to find out what are the requirements of that cement unit. Neither, neither engineering nor non-engineering. There are a lot of issues, social issues, there are a lot of other issues. Similarly, infrastructure development plan. I'm, I'm also again one more of the view that many universities and many colleges do not have a master plan, do not have an infrastructure plan. What do we want to do? We multi multiply laboratories. We replicate many laboratories which are not no use. Today, the whole world is talking about more out of less. And I know Aslam Saab, I am on the academic council of this university, how carefully is planning the infrastructure of this university. A financing plan, how will you get the resources, revenue, expenditure, etc. A governance plan, which is very important. I think most of you as academic leaders require to develop second level leadership because today, the higher education is facing a leadership crisis. And if good leaders like Dr. Aslam, our chairman, Professor Gopal Nadigar, all the distinct vice chancellors are giving, that is because they have, an, they have a feeling that they should develop next generation academic leaders. Uh, I have many more things to say, some other time I will come, but I think I should again congratulate Professor Gopal Nadigar, Dr. Srinivas, who has been very active, as Professor Gopal Nadigar said, every workshop, 15 days, one month, before only he informs, and we, we feel it a great privilege to be amongst all of you. Thank you very much.